5.2a, pole and cannon sprites. Again, all that, all that means is we're getting these objects, the sprites, the pole and the cannon onto the, onto the canvas. So once we get that done, then we'll be done for the day, and then we, we'll do the other ones next time. So you'd have to scroll down and then uh, click on a launch external tool, which is code HS. And of course, it's going to explain what the assignment is right here, which is good. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll read this as we go through. So first thing we have to do is copy and paste the code from 5.1c into Canvas, uh, from Canvas, rather. Uh, if you're accessing it from Canvas, if you're in code HS, it's 5.1.5, which I believe you can access from from this icon right here. So uh, take a minute, get that code in here, get it copied and pasted into, uh, into this assignment, and then we'll get started. Okay, if you need more time, get that done. But uh, you should be able to run this code and this is what you should see. And as we've said before, if you are not seeing this, because so far we've taken a day uh, to set up the canvas and the background here, which is, as you can see, I'm using a sky blue. Did you have to use a sky blue? No, you did not. Uh, did you have to use a spring green for the ground? No, you did not, but uh, you should have some color there, okay? So we can see the background and we can see the ground, which is good. So again, we should, by the end of this lesson, we should have a pole over here and then by the time we finish, you'll see the cannon right here, okay? So this is the code that we have already done so far for this much of the video game. And let's go and take, let's go and go to the assignment and see what it, uh, see what it says. In this activity, you're going to add sprites to create your cannon and pole. Your cannon will use an image, which you can add to the sprite using the image sprite property and load image command. The size of the image can be set by the scale sprite property where numbers bigger than one increase the size and numbers between zero and one decrease the size. So scale is how you're going to make if you wanted things to be bigger or smaller. And uh, you probably talked about scaling in math, just probably not directly using this word. Uh, they do use the word scale factor but, um, I don't know, I guess if you're in eighth grade, then, then they've talked about that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So, number one, copy and paste code, which we've done. Number two, at the top of your program, outside of all functions, declare a variable named canon. Also declare a variable named canon image and set the, image, uh, set the value to whatever this is. Again, that, that's actually the image of the canon, so... Uh, the cannon that we're going to be using comes from Code HS. They provided that for us. We're just going to pretty much copy and paste this into uh, the image of that uh, variable, the cannon, which is an image of a cannon. Yeah, there it is. Number three, define a custom function beneath your draw function named setup cannon. Number four, create a new sprite for the pole in your setup cannon function, saving it to a new variable named pole. And then number five, we'll get to that. So. Uh, number five is just setting up the properties of the pole, which again, we'll, we'll look at. You see it's got an X position, Y position, and width. Uh, it's got a height and then everything else down there. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, we've already done step number one. We've copied and pasted the code from, from before, and it was working from before. We know that because we ran the program. Now we're on number two at the top of the program, so we're going to start putting in our variables. And up here at the top, we already have the variable ground. Now we're going to put in another variable named cannon. So right here, we, we have let ground. I didn't put it, the cannon on a new line. You can, you can if you'd like. You can say let cannon uh, semicolon if you'd like, just like we had with let ground. But as we've seen before, this will kind of simplify things a little bit for us. I just put the cannon right here, let ground, comma, cannon, and then I got my semicolon. Now, why am I not putting the Canon image up here the, uh, on this line as well? It's because I like to see this one separated because, again, we're going to set this value to this image of a Canon from Code HS. So, I like this on a separate line. 
Uh, do you have to put on a separate line? No, I do not believe you do. So, but I, I like to put on a separate line again. For me, just kind of organize that better in my head. So that's what I that's right that's what I have right here. Let Canon image and again, make sure you're spelling things correctly. If you spell Canon with only one N, you need to make sure that you're spelling Canon with only one N when we start using Canon image in the coding later on. Uh, Canon, and then I've got capital I as well. Again, this is a fairly common mistake. If you don't capitalize the I, but you do later on, then it's going to be like, what the crap is that? So now that I have this, I've got my Canon image variable up here. Now I need to, I would just copy, I just copied and pasted this code in here, but I don't know, it's possible maybe you'd feel more comfortable typing it character by character. Uh, I did not because I'm more likely to make a mistake that way. And you can see it didn't really fit all on the line. It's kind of taking us beyond what it will show right there. So uh, it does have the apostrophe right there, which is good. And then it has the closing apostrophe. And then it's, little, it's covered by the red box, but it has a semicolon there at the end. So that should complete step number two. Then step number three, define a function, a uh, custom function beneath the draw function. So uh, I'm showing that I'm just putting it underneath it, but I gave myself a little bit more space right there. And so you can see I'm adding the cannon. Actually, we're adding the cannon and the pole in the setup cannon function. Uh, this is how we set it up. Of course, it told us what the name of that function should be, setup cannon. Setup is one word. Cannon is the second word. So the cannon is capitalized. And again, there's no space between that. Just like we saw with Canon image, you don't put a space between the two words if it's part of the same um, variable or, I guess, function, right? We don't have two words for function as separate words with a space in between. When they're two separate words like this, you just capitalize without a space the second word. And you'd do this even if there were three words. Uh, set up Canon 1. You'd capitalize the O, O, N, E, something like that. But for now, we just have setup canon. It is below the draw function, which we can see right here. And uh, don't, don't forget the parentheses right there and then the fancy brackets as well. When I pushed enter again, for me, it gave me the closing of that fancy brackets. If you need to put that in yourself, that's okay. You just got to put it in yourself. But that should complete step number three. Now we can go to step number four, create a new sprite for the pole. Remember, the sprite is just an object, the pole object. In the setup canon function, again, this, the, the, this function right here is going to be the pole and the canon, saving it to a new variable named pole. So I'm not going to name my pole variable up here. I can just set it up down here in my setup canon function. So let pole equals new sprite. And uh, again, don't forget to capitalize S for sprite. And then don't forget your parentheses right here either. All right, now this is, this is all coding that we've done before, and of course we're going to be doing more of it because um, we're going to be putting more objects or sprites into the video game that we're creating. And now that we have that, step number five, set up the properties for your pole sprite with the following requirements. We have an X position that's 50, Y position that's centered on the canvas. Remember, things already come centered on the canvas, so uh, we don't actually have to put any code in for this. I will make a note on the, uh, in the setup canon function so that we understand that uh, we don't need it because it already will become centered in terms of Y, which is up and down. Then we have a width of two and then a height. Uh, looks like it's the height of the canvas. Remember the canvas height is stored in the height variable. Yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that when we get there. So this is all for the pole sprite. So for example, pole for the X position equals 50. It'll be pole.x equals 50 x equals 50. And again, I put this line right here, uh, just a note. So see, I'm using the double slash right there because the pole will automatically be centered for the Y. Again, that's up and down. So I don't actually need to put any code for that. I don't need to put pole.y equals centered or anything like that or figure out where the center is. As long as I leave that blank, the pole will be centered for the Y. Uh, now, along those lines as well, you'll probably notice that uh, oh, the Y position is up and down, and the height is also up and down, and we want the height to be the height of the canvas, so it needs to be centered, because if we moved it up or down at all, then uh, it, would, it, would, um, it would have a gap on the bottom or the top, which we don't want. 
So with this much coding, we've, we've completed the first two uh, properties for the pole. Now we can put in the width and height. Pole.width equals two. And again, why is it two? It's because they told us to use two. Uh, that's two pixels. Two pixels is not very wide. And then they also said pole.height, it says it, it should be in the, as the height of the canvas, which we know is 450. So we're just, it, since we put the canvas height as 450, it automatically stores 450 as the height variable. So we don't actually have to declare a variable, let height equals height or 450. It automatically does that for us when we declared uh, the canvas right here, okay? So we have the height in there. Now it says it wants it on layer number one. And uh, as we increase the layers, um, as you increase the layers, that will put things on top of each other. So layer one is kind of towards the bottom. It's not the very bottom because it will be overlaid over the canvas, the background, uh, which is what we want. So let's go and put those in. And again, it's just pull dot layer. And we've done the second one right here, pole.color. Uh, black, yeah, it said to make it black, I guess. Seems acceptable. Well, I suppose you could make it a different color, but we made our, ours black. And then the last thing, collider, so pole.collider equals none with uh, apostrophes like this, okay? So we have set up completely the pole, and you could test run this, right? You could, you could click on output right now, and then run it to see what it looks like. Again, you should not see the cannon yet because we have not actually put the cannon on the page. I would recommend doing that even though I did not do that in the slides. So try that out, go to the output, just run it, see what it looks like. Um, but again, you should at least have a pull. And with that blue canvas, it should be somewhere towards the, somewhere towards the left because the X position is 50, okay? Well, what the heck, let's, uh, let's look back at that. Okay, so if this is my canvas right here, then your pole should be something like this because remember for the X position, which is left to right, this would be zero and we have a width of 450. So this 450 right here and we said, let the X position be 50, which again is, looks like it's about right there. Something like that, okay? So from zero to 50 is about right there. And the Y's, remember the Y's start at the very top as zero. And then as you go down, it's, that's the positive value. So that's the very bottom of our canvas is 450. And again, this, this pole is the, its height is the height of the canvas. So it's exactly this height of the canvas. And again, it's centered because we want it right in the middle. Again, we don't really care what that number is. Looks like it's 225, but we don't care about that. We just want to know that it's been put into the middle. Okay. So that's just a quick refresher on how that works with the positions for X's and Y's. And I guess a little bit with the height and width, but there you go. All right. So we can go to the next step. Hopefully you run that. Again, you'd have to go to output and run it. Again, you should see something like this, uh, something like this right here. Number six, create a new sprite for the cannon. So we have the pole set up already, all this stuff right here. Now we're ready to put the cannon in there. Create a new sprite for the cannon in the setup cannon function. Again, that's to set up the cannon. So we have the pole, now we need the cannon. Save it to your variable named cannon. So we already have a variable up here named cannon. So I don't need to say let cannon because we've already declared the cannon variable up here at the top. And so I just put cannon equals new sprite. And again, don't forget the sprite is capitalized with the parentheses and then the semicolon. So once again, if you're running stuff and uh, maybe it doesn't appear, maybe you're getting a blank page uh, or it's just completely white when you run it, again, usually sometimes it's just this, uh, you, cap you haven't capitalized maybe sprite Maybe you haven't capitalized the C for canvas. Maybe, uh, well, I guess we haven't used Canon image yet or something like that. Maybe you've forgotten a dot down here even, something like that. But this sets up our, our Canon variable as an object or sprite. 
Now that we have that, we'll go down to number seven, set up the properties for your Canon sprite with the following requirements. It should be an image, and we'll set the Canon.image property to equal the code this. Scale equals, uh, set the Canon scale property to half. So it's, uh, the one that we're gonna be using is only half its actual size. Uh, if you didn't put this line in, it would be twice as big. X position is 50, the Y position is 405, the layer equals two, and the collider, there shouldn't be none. So again, just with the positions, think about where the cannon will be in terms of its position. Now from what we saw before, it should be on the pole. So we've already set up the pole. Where should, are, are these positions going to match where the pole is? And remember as well, we're not doing this yet, or today even, but uh, when we finish the coding, it should be able to move up and down, uh, which again, we're not doing. But how would that affect this code? So let's go ahead and get started with that. I have a Canon.image, and I'm just pretty much using the coding that they said to use. Again, this is the image of the Canon. We're going to say load the image, the variable, which is at the top. Okay, so again, we can't see that now because I've scrolled down. But uh, this is the code. As long as you have typed that stuff in from before, uh, remember the, the image comes from code HS then we should be in good shape. There you go. Now, of course, this is not all that we're going to be doing for the cannon. We need a position for it. And we're gonna scale it a little bit, but uh, get ready for that. And again, don't forget your semicolon there at the end. Now, this is, this is an L, by the way, just in case you were wondering. This is a capital I, load, remember, since we're since we don't put spaces between words with this coding stuff, uh, I mean, there are situations that we do, but not in this case. I've got load and then capital I image. Load the image, Canon image. Now, again, if you've misspelled Canon when you declare the variable, uh, then um, you, you need to make sure there's only one N, or if you haven't capitalized the I for some reason, then, uh, but you've capitalized it here, then it's gonna jack things up too, okay? We don't want jacked up code, so we gotta make sure everything matches. If it doesn't match, we gotta figure out where we made our mistake. And we make, uh, at least I make lots of mistakes. Okay, next up. So it says uh, we got the scale. Okay, so I put the scale in. Canon.scale equals 0 0.5 semicolon. There it is. So there's my Canon scale. Again, it's only going to be half as big as its actual size is, and that's okay. Now that I've got my scale on, Let's go and put the X and Y positions in there. Again, they've told us where to put them. Uh, and I'll, I'll point this out. The X position is 50. For the Canon, the pole X position is 50 as well. Again, those should match on the X's because that's left and right. This Y position doesn't have to match because the Canon is not the, the entire height of the canvas. So what is the height of the cannon? Well, we've already scaled it from its original height to be about half. So what is that height? I don't know. Well, I don't have to know because, again, we've taken an image and we're just going to scale it to a specific size. Now, they told us what size to make that. Again, once we get this, uh, once we get this in here and we get all our code in and we make sure it's working, you may want to play, play around with this number to see what happens. Try to put 2 in. Try to put uh, 0 0.25. Try to put 1. See what happens with that, okay? Or, or use a double slash at the beginning of that, that line. For me, it's line 36. And see what happens there. Make, make this a note, just taking it away, and then see what happens. So now that I have my X and Y positions, I can go and put my layer in. And uh, Canon.layer, of course, which we've seen already with layers, like pull.layer right here. Now this, Canon.layer equals 2. 2 is not 1. That's because the cannon is going to overlay the pole. It's on top of the pole in terms of layers. So we have different layers right now. Two is higher than one, so it will appear above uh, layer one right here, which is what we do want. So we have the layer. Now we can put the collider in. Again, there isn't a collider, that's okay. Cannon.collider equals, don't forget your apostrophes there, none, with the semicolon at the end. So. 
This sets up the cannon and it sets up the pole. Now, I apologize. I think uh, I think I said if you're to uh, run this code, you should be able to see the pole before. But um, I forget, we have not called the setup cannon function, which we now need to do. So that is what we are going to do. Once we get it called, then it should be able to show this stuff on the screen for the game. So call the setup function at the end of your setup function. Sorry, setup cannon function at the end of the setup function to add the cannon and pull to the canvas. So here's my setup function. We already have called the setup ground function up here. Again, right now we have the function for setup cannon, but it's like, what do you want me to do with this crap? Well, we want you to call it out so that it will actually appear on the screen. So up here, we're going to just type setup cannon. Don't forget the capital C with, with uh, parentheses, just like we've done with setup ground, which is further below there. So that's what I do. Set up Canon, and I didn't give myself any space right here, and I didn't put any notes, but you could. Like, be, uh, above the setup ground uh, call function, when it calls the function up here in the setup function, you could make a note with a double slash and just say, this is, this is where it's going to call up the ground. And then down here, you could say, uh, you could put a line in between this and put the double slash and say, this is where we call up the pole and the cannon. I didn't do that, but you're welcome to do that if you'd like. So this will set up the, uh, this will call the cannon to the function. Now, if I go to the output, it should show it. Uh, so right here, it says number nine, test your program. So we've completed step number eight. Now we're going to actually see how this works. So I go to output. This is what I was seeing before, right? Because this, I have not run the new coding that I put in. If I click on run, what am I expecting to happen? Well, I would be expecting to see a poll, uh, I don't know, about right here. And then I would expect, we'll call this a cannon. I can't draw a cannon, but a cannon, something like right here, okay? Now, how do I know it's going to be like that? It's because of the locations, right? The pole has an X value that's 50. The cannon has an X value that's 50. The pole is centered, so it should, I mean, it shouldn't go off the screen like this when it pulls up, but that's the best I can do. Uh, but the Y is 405, which should be somewhere down here towards the bottom, because remember, for the Ys, the zero is up here at the top, and we've we made it a height of 450, so down here would be 450. This is about, I guess, about 405. Which again, just it just gives the cannon a starting position. So I click on run. Boom, there it is. So I was a little off on my on my Y position. That's okay. But again, this is what I expected to see. So this is good. And uh, we can submit a continue. But remember, I'm submitting and continuing because I'm seeing what I should see. If for some reason it's blank now, then uh, if, it's, if this is blank and before you actually had a background and a ground, then you know that some of the code that you put in has, has been jacked up. Now, what did we put in? Well, we put in a couple new variables at the top. We put in the setup cannon function with all these lines of code. And so you, uh, you may have to go back here Remember the double slash method. You can double slash every single line of code and uh, just take, take one line off at a time and then click run. If that works, then you take the next line, the, two, the double slash off, and click run until, it's, uh, until it doesn't do what you expect it to do. Okay, And you can even do that with the variables up here if you need to or the calling of the function on line 12 for me. Now, of course, you can just go through character by character and see what you did. Uh, but again, that may not be specific. The double slash method will at least help you to find where you made a mistake, where, which line of code you made a mistake. So then, then you can go through character by character on that line. So if you made a mistake, uh, then it may not look like this. If it doesn't look like this, you need to go back and fix the code. This looks pretty good for me, so I'm gonna submit and continue. There it is, and uh, if I click on Submit and Continue, I'll get the credit. But again, we're not doing this assignment today. We're going to do this next time. So right now, the cannon is not able to move. It's not able to actually fire projectiles. All it's going to do is sit on the screen where we had it. Um, 
but we want it to move, which again, we're going to be doing next time. So you can see uh, we have a Boolean statement, which means we're probably gonna have to use a Boolean statement. And I think they talked about using the, the keyboard, which again, we'll get that code in next time. But for now, for now, you should at least be able to see this. And again, you can't move the cannon. Uh, you can't move the pole, which you shouldn't be able to. You can't move the background. You can't move the ground. That's good. Okay. So again, if it's not looking like this, you got to go through the code, figure out where you made a mistake. I, I will say this too, that uh, just like the miniature golf game, do keep in mind that eventually at the end of unit five, we're going to be create. You're going. You you will be creating your own. I don't know projectile game, cannon game. So keep in mind what we're doing and keep in mind how you will want to change this game to make your own level. Uh, for example, I mean, you could have uh, some kind, you could make the pole horizontal and you could shoot down or something like that. But keep that in mind because we're going to do it eventually.